So our last speaker for the session is uh, Hong Bin Chen from NYU. So take it away. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, um, organizational works. So um, today I'm going to talk about dynamic polymers and environment measures and ordering by noise. This is based on um, a joint work with the uh, Europe Act team. So let me start with uh, uh, um, just briefly uh, discussing what its polymer path is. So a finite kind of finite lens polymer path pinned at zero with lens M is a uh, kind of some vector like this, and uh, the first like uh, uh, coordinate is zero. So the picture uh, can be seen here. You you have something from zero, and uh, it kind of takes steps in discrete time and the space kind of it's a uh, uh, continuous in space and discrete in time. So then we can define point-to-point -point poly polymer measure with a fixed end that is given by a, a Gibbs measure with the energy. Uh, here we are considering the nearest neighbor quadratic interaction and plus some random potential at each time. So the reference measure is pinned at zero and also pinned another um, end of the uh, polymer chain. So this is a finite length uh, polymer chain. And uh, then we're moving on to the infinite, uh, infinite length uh, polymer chain. So this is basically a trivial extension of the finite one. So you just extend one end to the infinity. So it can be represented a vector in uh, this product space with a pinned uh, start. So again, formally, uh, so I'm using uh, uh, IVPM to stand for infinite volume uh, polymer measures. So this again, formally given by a Gibbs measure on this product space. So the energy here is again, uh, the quadratic interaction of nearest, nearest neighbors plus a random potential at each time. So uh, it's formal because there's no the big measure in uh, uh, countable space, uh, countable product space. So, so to, Define uh, polymer measure rigorously, we need to uh, use DLR condition. And uh, uh, sort of in the setting here, it can be simply stated as well, uh, the polymer measure is a measure such that the first M minus one uh, coordinates, if you consider the projection to them, it's given by a finite volume polymer measure with its endpoint uh, uh, integrated against to some probability measure. So the uh, picture looks like uh, uh, this. So if you project down to the first M minus one, then you have finite volume polymer measure while the end point is integrated against some uh, polymer, uh, against some uh, probability measure. So, so the, uh, the non result about uh, this setting is uh, say we introduce a set SV. So this is all the polymers has uh, asymptotic slope of V. So that, because we are pinned at zero, so slope is basically you just divided by k and the limit is v. So this is all the polymers with slope v. So the non result is that for any uh, inverse temperature, any slope, and, and uh, every like realization of the uh, random potential, there's a unique infinite volume polymer measure and it's concentrated on slope v. So kind of a, uh, you can divide spaces into slopes and on each slope, there's a unique infinite volume polymer measures. So again, there's a, like a huge literature on polymer uh, models. And uh, here I listed those for the um, uh, uh, infinite volume ones and uh, some of them are uh, in the discrete settings. So uh, uh, these are the time, time constraints and forgive me for not going deeper into these uh, uh, works. So back to uh, our work here. So the goal of our work is to try to initiate kind of um, a new approach to view these type of objects. So um, again, uh, kind of the, the ultimate goal is to understand the existence and the uniqueness of infinite volume polymer measures. And uh, we want to initiate an approach by viewing them as uh, invariant distributions of uh, stochastic dynamics. And sort of we want to attack the problem maybe from the dynamic point of view. So this is like the whole maybe agenda we are trying to uh, uh, maybe push or uh, advertise. Uh, however, in this work, I should emphasize that we are really not proving maybe new things about infinite volume polymer measures. And instead we are sort of uh, explore uh, kind of the other direction. We want to uh, kind of establish this uh, the kind of uh, this type of uh, view that uh, um, Actually, we can have a one-to-one -one correspondence between infinite volume polymer measures and uh, 
uh, invariant distributions for the uh, dynamics. So we are really trying to establish this view in this work. Okay, so moving on to the dynamics part of the story. So recall the energy uh, is given by quadratic interaction and the random potential. So here we uh, also define uh, the lowercase f to be the uh, the derivative of the potential at each uh, at each time. So and we also use the notation for the discrete Laplacian. Then I give three equivalent expressions of the uh, dynamics. The first is uh, expressing a gradient flow uh, um, uh, fashion. So uh, yeah. So the, the gradient is given by the uh, gradient of this uh, energy. And if we write out everything, then you can find that uh, uh, the first term can be rewritten as a uh, kind of a, a perturbed version of the discrete uh, uh, heat equation. So, and also you have a random, um, uh, random part from the Brownian motion. And uh, finally, you if you write out everything in coordinates, then this looks like a, this so yeah so there are like two sources of randomness in this dynamics so first is a, a noise part so for each k um we um we, we let wk to be a standard two-sided winner process and they are independent from each other and another source of randomness is uh, the random potential so here, like aside from some usual assumptions on those potentials, such as they have local uh, exponential movements or something, um, kind of the one uh, condition, one assumption that stands out is we, uh, in this work, we, we assume that F satisfy this presence of flatness assumption. That is to say, for almost every realization of potential, there are sufficiently large regions where it's like uh, uh, the potential, the profile is almost flat. So in the picture, you can see that, uh, so given any kind of things in orange, so given any like a height and height of the box and any kind of strength of the derivative, I can find a box. Uh, there is some A uh, kind of uh, the center box that, such that uh, for the box centered at A, um, I have the derivative of potential is uh, less or equal to delta. So this is kind of, uh, almost flatness. So this is a uh, assumption for this randomness. And um, what's uh, the first result is that uh, we show that uh, uh, indeed the dynamics exists and the solution map mapping uh, from the time t and uh, initial condition y to the solution at time t is well defined almost uh, uh, surely. So it's a strong solution and uh, it's continuous uh, with respect to uh, uh, initial conditions and also uh, noise, and also it's uh, progressively measurable. So the approach here uh, is, is quite like PDE. So we use clerking approximations. We we do the uh, we approximate by finite dimensional uh, uh, SDEs. So and then we obtain limiting a larger space and then tighten it down to a, a kind of correct space we want. Okay, so. Uh, so naturally, the dynamics induce uh, semi groups, and uh, the first proposition is sort of uh, natural because we are dealing with a gradient flow um, SDE, and we are considering a uh, Gibbs measure. So, uh, so one direction is clear: uh, if uh, if we have infinite volume point measures, then it's invariant with respect to the uh, semi group. Uh, so this is one direction, and remember, our goal is really trying to identify these two things. So we only need to ensure uniqueness of the uh, invariant distribution to kind of draw the conclusion. Okay, so to show the uniqueness, we need a kind of phenomenon also uh, like in the title of this talk that is ordering by noise. So let me first recall that uh, SV is a set of all the polymers with slope V and uh, further we induce, uh, we introduce a or partial order on those polymers. So X is less or equal to Y if uh, it is so for each coordinate. So the theorem goes like this for almost every realization of this randomness, um, the dynamics is order preserving. That is, if you start with X less or equal to Y, then you are going to stay um, kind of ordered like this for all the other time. Secondly, it's slope preserving. If you start with something with slope V, then your dynamics are going to be uh, of slope V for all the time. 
And finally, it's really the most important property we use to prove the uniqueness of uh, event distribution um, that is uh, ordering by noise. So suppose X has slope V, Y has slope U, and V is less than U. Then there's random time such that um, after this tau, uh, sort of uh, these dynamics are going to be ordered. So uh, so picture uh, to explain this is, uh, is the following. So suppose the red polymer path is X, the uh, blue polymer path is Y. So they have different uh, um, uh, asymptotic slopes. And may, so starting from time, time zero, maybe they have some kind of entanglement near the origin, uh, like in the finite part. But uh, the theorem tells us that after some random time tau t, they are going to be disentangled and they are going to stay ordered uh, for all the time. So using this ordering by noise property and plus uh, the 1D uh, kind of uh, uh, 1D nature of the model, 1D means uh, the, 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 uh, the one dimensional uh, space. So we can actually kind of uh, squeeze everything and uh, make them ordered. And using uh, this sort of intuition, we can prove that for each slope, uh, um, this infinite volume point measure is a, uh, is a unique invariant distribution with respect to the polymer dynamics. And uh, that concludes kind of uh, the uh, uh, kind of the slogan that's a unique infinite volume point measure is one to one is in one-to-one -one correspondence to unique uh, invariant distribution of the dynamics. So um, this concludes my talk and uh, thank you for your attention. Happy to answer questions.